Ladies and gentlemen, Dark Brandon rises. Yes, we've got Joe Biden in multiple instances undercutting Kamala Harris and her campaign, doing interviews, talking, doing appearances when Kamala Harris is at a rally. In this instance, she was going on The View. She was doing a segment. It was airing, I guess, live. And Biden is out answering questions about the hurricane. And in this situation, Biden totally refutes the idea that the Harris campaign was trying to insinuate that Ron DeSantis was ignoring Kamala Harris and not answering her. And Ron DeSantis said, that's completely ridiculous. I think Ron DeSantis totally mogged Kamala and, and it seems like they're just so desperate. It seems so disingenuous. Like, oh, he's not answering me. He's making, he's, you know, he's, he's making this about politics when in reality, DeSantis has done a great job trying to get people ready for the hurricane in Florida. He's got an unbelievable approval rating. He won the state in re-election back in 2022 by 20 points. The state has shifted so far to the right. We got a new New York Times poll that came out of Florida with Trump possibly up by 13, insinuating that Trump might win Florida by around 10 or 11 points at least, which would be a, a significant uh, step up from what he did in 2020, only winning it by three points. Uh, but you can see what's going on here with Biden. As far as the governor of Florida has been cooperative. He said he's gotten all that he needs. I talked to him again yesterday, and I, and I said, whatever, I said, no, you're doing a great job. It's being all being done well. We thank you for it. And I literally gave my personal phone number to call. Um, so I don't know. There was a rough start in some places, but every governor, every governor from Florida to North Carolina has been fully cooperative and supportive and acknowledged what this team is doing. And they're doing an incredible job. But we got a lot more to do. So Biden, I, I mean, listen, this, he's really undercutting Kamala Harris and her campaign, and they cannot be happy about this. There was also a report that came out a few days ago talking about Jill, uh, Joe's wife, and, and just how Jill hates Kamala. They're not even campaigning for Kamala. And there's a big rift going on right now between the Bidens and Kamala Harris and her team. There's definitely some anim animosity there when it comes to Biden. Not Clearly not wanting to drop out. Maybe he personally wanted to drop out, but Jill and Hunter... We remember uh, going to Camp David and, and convincing Joe to stay in the race for at least a few more weeks because they wanted him out like immediately when he went to Camp David the weekend after that debate. The debate happened on like Thursday night or whenever and back in on June 27th. And then he goes to Camp David. They convince him to stay in. He wants to stay in. He does several. I mean, he tries to rebuild his own image after the terrible debate, saying that he wasn't down a crazy amount in the polls, saying he was right there, saying that he's not dropping out, having his team tweet out daily. I am staying in this race, and it's clear the Democrats did not want that, and it got so bad to where they had to legitimately threaten him and said, the 25th Amendment is going to happen, and you're going to be seen as being very old and very weak, and that's how you're going to be removed with the 25th, or you can have some dignity, and you can step down and kind of use some crazy excuse. That's why the entire thing was done half-assed, because Biden didn't want to do it. I mean, who drops out as an incumbent president on a Sunday afternoon with a two-paragraph letter that's released on social media. It just makes no sense for that monumental. Day. So Biden, it's like, you, you know, unwillingly he had to do this. Otherwise he was going to get 25th amendmented and th that's just what happened. And so there's clearly a huge rift between Biden and Harris. It's, it does Biden have the, the cognitive ability? Does he have the fight left in him to really say, no, screw this. I'm pissed off. I mean, the past few days, certainly he's done things a little bit differently. And now it's come out. There's also a report where he blamed Obama for the Russian invasion. And that is from CNN. You can see Biden tells Woodward that ultimately Barack Obama is the one to blame for Russia invading Ukraine ahead of Russia's invasion into Ukraine. Biden complained that Obama didn't do enough to stop Putin in 2014 during the invasion of Crimea. Quote, they fucked up in 2014, Biden said to a friend, according to Woodward. And so that's something that also has leaked out. That's why we are here. They fucked it up. Barack never took Putin seriously, uh, saying, I guess, that he appeased him too much by allowing Russia to basically annex Crimea back in 2014. And then I guess he's insinuating that he's a lot, that enabled Putin to then invade Ukraine which would have happened in 2022. Although, I mean, there's a lot of blame to go around when it comes to that situation. There's blame for NATO as well, which is by something that Biden brags about expanding NATO. Well, that's the main reason that Putin says 
the invasion uh, of Ukraine happened because of the expansion of NATO and the aggressiveness of it. And that's something that, that Biden ba brags about. If you're Obama, you could you could kind of turn it around on him. Uh, but, but it is it is kind of funny that Biden is the one blaming Obama uh, when Putin cites the main reason being uh, NATO. I mean, you could, I guess, say there's appeasement when it comes to the annexing of, of Crimea. But in general, uh, that, that certainly is a, a very, very complex situation that's got a lot of layers to it. But the reality is all of the reports, I mean, we're seeing, and, and you don't want to get too much into this. I mean, remember when Biden put on the, the Trump hat? I think he was just trying to be nice, and and that was just a little thing. But I'm not saying Biden's going to be a Trump supporter or anything like that, but it does seem like Biden not only recognizes that, that he was wronged by Kamala and the Democratic establishment, but he's also trying to get a little bit of revenge. I mean, this is like the backup QB or the starter getting benched for the backup and then secretly, I mean... You know, if you're the starting QB, you get benched. You kind of want the backup to fail. I mean, I mean, that's just that even though you want your team to succeed, I mean, the Democrats are Biden's team. He wants them to succeed. But when you get benched like that and you could kind of say, well, it's because of my age. That's it. If I was younger, I'd be fine. But still, there has to be that fight in you to where it's like, no, I don't like this. I mean, it's very clear that his family, they, I'm guessing they don't think they were treated very nicely uh, being Hunter and Jill. Not that Hunter is really a leg to stand on, but more so Jill uh, the wife who, uh, you know, she was like running things. She really, she was like the boss bitch. She wanted to have all the power and all of that's gone now. They basically just pushed her aside and they're having her do like these pretend meetings now. By the way, I mean, is it like, did, I wonder if she's wearing this because of the Joker or something. I mean, we saw Joker 2 come out. It's gotten some bad reviews, but like, like what is this get up? I mean, and, and so, so there's another spat between these two guys. Like I said, in a year, it's going to come out that they're getting married. These two. And it's one of those relationships where you're like, whoa, you know, we never would have expected that. But, you know, opposites attract. I'm just kidding. But it be, it would just be funny. Um, but in, in general, oh, by the way, another thing I forgot to mention, there was a Democratic internal poll that supposedly got leaked or it's a rumor that has Harris down by three in Wisconsin, which is pretty crazy. And I would say probably pretty accurate, honestly. Remember, those internal polls are more accurate Remember another thing with, with Biden, how they undercut Biden by, per, I think Democrats purposefully leaked the horrible Biden internals. If you guys remember those internals after the debate, it was like uh, early July. I mean, Trump was just crushing Biden every, everywhere, but there were internals that got leaked that had Biden losing New Mexico. I also think they had him losing New Jersey by a point as well. And I think Democrats leaked those because they wanted to force Biden out and it puts puts more pressure on him. But this internal with Harris down by three in Wisconsin, it adds up. I think she's going to lose Wisconsin by a few points at least. And, um, you know, you've got New York Times putting out a poll saying she's plus three nationally when they also say that she's down by 13 in Florida. It's, it's kind of hard to believe that she'd be plus three nationally. But either way, uh, it does seem like at this point, Biden at least understands that he's been wronged or he feels he's been wronged. Honestly, I mean, there's no way Biden was in shape to be the president anyways. But the main issue for liberals is, see, the liberal argument will be, well, Republicans like myself, I had been saying forever that this is a charade. There's no way Biden's going to be the candidate. And then they ended up replacing him. So then liberals are like, well, why are you mad? You said you needed to replace him. Well, you guys gaslit us for years and including Kamala Harris lied blatantly that Biden was fine. So much so that they started saying the videos of Biden struggling to walk and struggling to talk were AI deep fakes. So they say that, they say Biden's fine. Remember, the Democratic narrative going into that debate on June 27th was that Biden was perfectly fine. There was nothing wrong with him. It's all Republican conspiracies. They were trying to argue, they were turning it around in Trump. They were saying Trump's only three years younger than Biden. He's really old. He's mentally compromised. And then the debate happens. And then, you know, there's like a fracture within the Democratic Party. All the young people want Biden gone. A lot of the people, you know, at mainstream networks, it seemed like MSNBC was starting, even MSNBC turned on him with Scarborough, CNN turned on him the, during the, like during the debate, they were done with him and then they got him out. But it's like, okay, so you get him out. Yes, I said he would get out, but you were the guy, you guys were the ones gaslighting us saying that, but there was nothing wrong with Biden, nothing wrong with Biden, nothing wrong with Biden. Then one debate happens and now he's the worst thing ever and he has to be removed because he's compromised. Well, what, what about two weeks ago when you said it was all deep fakes? So see that, that's the problem. There's just no consistency with these people. But either way, I do think Biden thinks that he was wronged for the way in which he was removed. You could say, well, he stepped down by by his own volition. But we all know that, uh, I mean, Nancy Pelosi admitted it. It was going to be the easy way or the hard way. The easy way is him stepping down with supposed dignity. They probably approached him and said, you can step down with dignity or we are going to 25th Amendment you. And Nancy Pelosi said on CNN, easy way or the hard way, that's what it was going to be. And you can, I mean, Nancy Pelosi 
really, there's definitely a, a, a drift between Pelosi and Biden in that relationship. And it's clear that Biden is not too happy. Now, is Biden just old? And maybe, I mean, it also came out that Biden hates, like, like said something really bad about Netanyahu, which by the way, there are conservatives that are going to like that. And obviously, you know, leftists that are Palestine supporters like that as well. Um, but there's been some interesting quotes from Biden recently that have, that have made headlines and kind of been brought out from his past. And then you also do have this, uh, this is something I've been saying for a while. Sherrod Brown was never the favorite in Ohio. That's correct. He never was. Trump won Ohio by eight points in 2016 and 2020. And the state I think has shifted right since 2020 by at least a point and a half. So even if Trump performs relative to the same margins in 2020 and 2016, which is an eight point victory, do we really expect Sherrod Brown, even though he's an incumbent to perform eight points better? You know, when you, when you look at Trump versus Moreno, it's, is Moreno really going to perform worse nine points worse than Trump? It's just, it's very unlikely. Also Sherrod Brown, he's, he dodged Trump in 2020. There was no election uh, in, in the Senate in 2020 in Ohio. So I think Moreno is going to win. If Trump wins by nine and a half, Moreno wins by three and a half, four, something like that. Maybe even it's closer to where Moreno wins by five or six if Trump wins by nine and a half. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.